Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Core Keeper video today, taking a look at all the crafting options up to the Iron Age. I'm going to explain every item that you can craft, the workbenches, the different resources you might need for some of them, and pretty much some of the items I think you need first. So let's go. Pretty much you'll get to a point where you are able to make iron armor and a whole other benches like jewelry so you can craft your own rings and necklaces. And eventually the Scarlet Workbench, which we're going to need the Scarlet Bars from, which I haven't actually quite worked out how to get so far. I'm guessing it's in a biome I've not visited yet. So let's go through all the crafting options, just give you a heads up. So the most basic workbench, obviously by now you're playing a game, you get to craft things like a chest, a cooking pot, a furnace, a brand new salvage and repair station. This has just been added for the early access version. This wasn't in the demo. It allows you to go ahead and repair your tools and weapons. Then you've got a copper anvil, and then you've got a tin workbench. Then we've got some building pieces like wood wall, wood floor, wood door, beds, and of course a wooden bridge. Then we've got some copper tools, copper sword, copper shovel, pickaxe, hoe, lantern, and of course the watering can. So let's go over the stuff, what you can make with this. Copper anvil, obviously you can make wooden armor, and you can also make copper. Increases it by about three or four points each upgrade. And you do get some other bonuses and buffs. Later on, some of the armor suits will give you a set bonus. Then we've got the cooking pot. Obviously put two bits of food in, get a whole bunch of different recipes. And now they've got a recipe book that will tell you exactly what you get from them if you want to have a quick peruse. The furnace, obviously you can smelt copper, you can smelt tin, and you can smelt iron in this one. Obviously chests, you know what to do with. The lanterns, you obviously put in your offhand. The salvage and repair station, I thought I would show that to you. So we can see we've got a tin pickaxe here. We can go ahead and try repairing it, but nothing's working. That's because you need to dismantle a tool first. Now it can be any tool, any armor piece. So you can actually do this with just wooden stuff as well. Basically when you dismantle something, you'll get something called scrap back. There you go, scrap parts are there. And so what you do is you put your wooden pickaxe in, click salvage, and you can see I've got nine scrap now. We'll do it one more time, and now we've got 10. So when that's in your inventory, you can pop whatever tool it is you want to repair, and it can be any level. So even like when you get to the iron pickaxe, you don't need iron to repair it, you still just need a scrap part which you can get from wood. So it makes everything really super cheap and easy to repair. Just don't press the wrong button. There you go, repaired it. You can repair everything in our inventory as well. It does fully repair, so you might want to really wait until something goes right to the bottom or the end before you go repairing it. Just for this little video I'm showing you. And that's it, that's how you use the salvage and repair bench. It doesn't look like if you salvage something more expensive that you'll get anything different from it. It's still going to be the same stuff. And you can't salvage everything. It looks like it's only tools and weapons. Next up is the tin workbench. So with this bad boy, you can do a lot more. You can go ahead and paint your base, just like the colors I've seen here. You have to craft special wall pieces and floor pieces, then you're able to paint them with a paintbrush. You'll need tin for that, which is fairly hard to get in the early stages. Then you can go ahead and craft your paintable walls and floors out of clay walls and wood. You also do get wood fences, spike traps, and wood fence gates as well. Spike traps really do work. So I'm gonna craft a bunch of these and put them around in certain spots. So every now and then I do have a slime spiky one wander around. When it comes to the actual paint bench itself, when you place it down you can choose primary or secondary colours and these last forever. So every time you get a brand new paintbrush, you don't have to refill it, that will be able to paint as long as you've got it. So I've got a whole selection inside here. And you can go ahead and paint chests, although you can't paint crafting benches. You can customise certain things like torches though. So you can see you can paint all your torches as well if you really want it to. So have fun customising all your chests to whatever colours you want them to be. And next up we've got the carpenter's table, again about more customization. Some wood and eight tin. And you're able to craft benches or pedestals where you can put items on. Decorative torches, rugs and decorative pots. It does look like you can grow plants in these decorative pots as well. To use the pedestals you just simply press the button on it and you can go ahead and put anything in it and it will rest on top. Even another pedestal. Just like that. 
And after that, we've got the Railway Forge, which you can use to make railway pieces, as well as minecarts. Alchemy Table, where you can make potions. We jump in. You can see, got a healing potion. Just need slime and heart berries. Enrage Potion, which gives you extra melee damage. Slime and larvae meat. And materials and stone skin potion, which gives you extra boost in armor for one minute. Slime and carrot. Apparently you are going to be able to make these potions more stronger as you progress. There's a refinery that you can get later on. You're also able to make bombs, smaller ones, and then much larger ones that require bomb peppers and slime. Then we've got the tin anvil. This is where you can make all the bronze armor sets. Obviously you're going to do a lot more better for your health, your armor, and it'll give you extra melee, ranged, and mining damage. So it's a good all-rounder. You also make tin daggers. A slingshot, which is one of the few ranged weapons early game. Definitely recommend getting this. And a wooden shield. You equip the wooden shield in your offhand, and then you can go ahead on the controller and press B to hold and use it. So you can see at the Railway Forge, rails cost wood and tin, and Minecraft or minecarts cost wood and tin bars also. You are going to need these eventually. The map is absolutely massive. And so here is the slingshot. So you can do a fair amount of damage with it. So that's pretty much everything you can make in crafting and base items. Then you've got obviously the tin tool sets, which will do more damage and stuff. Got the explorer's backpack, which is really useful. Tin bars and fiber, so you'll be able to carry 10 inventory slots more and increases your movement speed. And then you've got the fishing rod. Now unless you've started with a fisher character as your background, this is the first chance that you'll get to make one. And then the last thing is the iron workbench. 10 tin, 20 iron bars. And with this, we obviously get the next level. You'll be able to get a smelter kiln, which you'll be able to smelt gold, as well as the crimson stuff. You can see it's gold, and then scarlet bars. Okay, I called it crimson. I've played way too much Terraria. You've got a cartography table, which I've not crafted yet, because I don't really need it, and I still haven't got loads of iron. But it's basically just to show your map with other explorers when they join your world. And we've got the jewellery workbench, which is how you can craft your own accessories. Wood, iron and gold are needed for that. Here you can craft a copper cross necklace to give you extra critical. Iron chunk necklace to give you extra armour. Gold crystal necklace to give you melee and range. But you need ancient gemstones and gold bars for that one. And then some rings. 17% range improvement with gold and ancient gemstones. The glow tulip ring. 10 glow tulips and 10 iron bars. I have that at the moment as well. And then swift ring, which gives you a movement. 12 iron bars and 3 ancient gemstones. Obviously, you'll find lots of accessories as you explore the world, but it's good to know that you can craft some. And some of these are definitely much stronger than the ones that you've come across in the world. Then we've got the scarlet workbench, as I said. I still haven't worked that out yet. I'm getting there hopefully soon. Tin bar, iron bar and scarlet bars to craft it. So you're going to need a lot of tin and a lot of iron. Then we've got electronics table, wood, copper bars, and iron bars. Apparently there is automation in the game, but this allows you to basically have the redstone system from Minecraft. You've got electrical wires, you've got levers, you've got sticks that will generate more power, logic circuits, anti-lay circuits, you've got electric doors, a lamp, and electricity generator. Copper, iron, and gold flat one. You can see it pretty much needs a lot of the same stuff. Then we've got the iron anvil. And here, it's a little bit disappointing. You can only craft just an iron armor set. There's nothing else to make here. No extra swords or weapons made out of iron. So maybe it'll be the next round where that will get more stuff. Or maybe you only get the best weapons from defeating the bosses. But you do get a set bonus for crafting all three pieces. Well, that's going to be a lot of iron. As well as a few gold as well. But yeah, basically when you're about to die, you'll get an extra bonus of armor while you're at low health. Probably not worth sinking your actual points into unless you've got an abundance of iron and you've gone and crafted everything else. Then we've got more base pieces, stone brick walls, stone floor, stone bridge, stone door, stone fence gate and stone fence. And then of course we've got iron tools, the best at the moment for going ahead and digging and mining. And yet this is where you actually craft and yeah you can craft yourself an iron sword. We've got the large watering can which does a much bigger job than the smaller one. Then you've got the iron fishing rod, which is needed if you want to pull up more rare fish. Apparently there's 19 fish in the game, so good luck with that. I'm sure it'll give you lots of buffs and bonuses. I've only caught two different types so far. Last thing to just mention, because it is a crafting video, is the stuff that you actually get when you maybe go and look at the bosses. Basically, when you get your boss drop, which in this case was the Glurch Eye, 
I could craft a sort of waypoint marker for where the bosses are. Cost five ancient gemstones, five mechanical parts. And then the slime sword, which I've got, which is pretty good. It's been really helpful. This will be the first boss that you'll probably encounter unless you're really unlucky and somehow missed them. Then you can see there's a whole bunch more. In the patch notes that they released with the release, they have indeed confirmed there's going to be automation in this as well. That's already in the game. And another two or three bosses. So there you go. That is everything you can craft up to the Iron Age. Hopefully give you an idea of what to expect. Maybe what you might want to save certain things for. I would say essential, obviously, when you're going and crafting these items, is obviously the cooking pot and the furnace, unless you chose to be a chef where you get the cooking pot for free. And, of course, the salvage and repair station. That won't take too long. You'll need a few bits of copper, so you really should be getting all of these. And then it depends. If you're playing a bit chilled and relaxed, it might be worth it going for the cosmetic stuff, like the carpenter table and, of course, the painter's table. The paint only costs some slime, and as I said, one brush will last forever. But it does cost quite a bit of tin, and tin, as I said, it's quite hard to find sometimes. So I would focus on instead saving your tin so that you can go ahead and craft the iron workbench eventually and a tin anvil. Also, a tin pickaxe as probably the first thing you should craft. This will allow you to get iron ore much quicker and easier. Then I'd say the backpack and then maybe give it a go with the fishing. You do get some nice buffs when you combine fish with food or two fishes together. I don't think you need the spike traps that much, so I won't bother too much, and the rest is kind of cosmetic items. And then of course, once you get to the iron stage, you should have plenty of copper by now, but you still may be struggling for tin. So I would go for the smelter, I would go for the jewellery workbench so you can craft yourself some more rings and stuff to give you extra buffs. And obviously I would absolutely go for the iron pickaxe. You don't need a cartographer table unless you've got friends joining. An electrics table, it's kind of alright. But you are going to need other stuff to really utilize this more. Again, it's more for cosmetic purposes at the moment until you get the automation stuff that you can send stuff down conveyor belts. And Scarlet Workbench, obviously, yeah, you're going to need a lot of tin and a lot of iron eventually when you do discover the Scarlet Bars. So there we go. That is after a good sort of six, seven hours playing the demo and then the rest of the release as it went live. Hope you're enjoying the game. I am massively. Can't wait to do even more guides and tutorials for you guys. And so I'll see you lot later on. Bye-bye.